Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I have an owl pellet dissection to share with you. We got our owl pellet field biology kit from rainbowresource.com. You can find more information down in the description box below. So first I'm going to share with you what comes in this kit. I'm also going to share with you how to prepare your own owl pellets that you find in nature so that they can be safe for dissection, especially if you're working with children. This kit comes with tweezers and a magnifying glass and a field guide which turned out to be incredibly helpful as well as three large owl pellets. Now a friend sent me some owl pellets that she had on her property. I'm gonna show you how to prepare them here. We learned how to do this in one of the books that we have been reading for this unit study that we're doing. So you take your owl pellets and you wrap them in aluminum foil. I had several owl pellets. Now they're much smaller than the ones that came in the kit. And next, you're going to place them on a baking tray and you're going to bake them in the oven for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Okay, so while that's baking, we are going to move on to exploring these three large pellets that we got from the kit. Now, owl pellets are what the owl regurgitates after it eats a meal. So bear in mind that this might not be the most pleasant of all science projects that you will do. Okay, so I have given the children a piece of paper to work on as well as a little tray. I think using a paper plate might be a good choice as well. We're working with these dry to begin with, but I'm going to show you how to soak them later on during this video. Uh, we did not use gloves. These have already been treated, so there shouldn't be any germs or bacteria, but if you feel more comfortable, definitely wear gloves. We also pulled from our own stash of materials, and I gave the children some more tweezers because we found that it was easier to work with two tweezers. Since my children are working at the same time, I went ahead and I pulled from our stash as well. We also have some magnifying glasses and this really cool kind of cube so that you can look at your little object without touching it at all and it has a magnifying glass on top which was really neat so very quickly we find some pretty interesting things in these owl pellets that is a skull uh, there are a ton of bones and you want to be careful about separating all of them at first you go through and you find all the big stuff and then later you're going to find the smaller stuff and i'm going to show you that in a little bit okay so these owl pellets have been baking for 45 minutes so we're going to set them aside and let them cool and in the meantime we're going to continue working through those large owl pellets that came in the kit so overall, the large owl pellets were really fantastic. They came with a ton of stuff. It was a little bit pricey, so if you do find your own owl pellets in nature, just bear in mind that you may need several of them in order to do the project that we're going to do later on in this video, which came about kind of by accident, but I'm super pleased with the way it turned out, so I hope that you keep watching. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff to go through when you're looking through these owl pellets. There's a lot of fur and things that you can discard, but then there are a lot of bones, and then there are a lot of really tiny bones. It does take a while to sift through those things, and after several hours, we kind of needed a break. Now, my son was able to find a lot of large pieces that looked really good. They didn't need a lot of cleaning. And now we're gonna put all of this aside and I'm going to show you an alternative to going through these owl pellets dry. Uh, I've got a, a, a little cup of really, really hot water. It was boiling, but by the time I got it upstairs, it was a little bit cooler than that. And I am going to go ahead and open up this third owl pellet that came in the kit. And instead of just dissecting it dry, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the water and let it absorb water. Now these owl pellets were not too dense and the water was able to absorb pretty quickly so we only let this one soak for maybe about 10 to 15 minutes and we found this tip in the field guide that came in the kit so we're going to go ahead and remove it and there is an odor so if you are really sensitive to these kinds of things or you're finding the whole process kind of grosses you out a little bit then this may not be a good solution for you i did have to hold back a lot of my own personal opinions and judgments about this so that we could really dive into this with scientific minds okay so you can see that this is quite a different experience going through it when it's all wet and mushy <laughs> but the bones come out a little bit cleaner uh, and so you might just kind of weigh those two options 
So you can really see the skull here. I'm pointing out to my children the row of teeth that you can see. And then when you flip it over and you look at the teeth in the front, you can identify what kind of animal that was. And I do believe that is a rodent and more specifically a rat. Okay, so we're going to keep going through this owl pellet. This one turned out to be the most fruitful of all the owl pellets. There were so many bones. In fact, there were three skulls, which we did not find in any of the other owl pellets. We did find skulls, but not this many in one owl pellet. So we're going to go through and take out as many bones as we can and kind of sort through them. At this point, my son is going to pick one of the owl pellets that we have previously baked. They're nice and cool now. However, they are really hard. It is possible that I overbake them or left them in the oven for too long once they were down, done baking. And these are going to need a lot longer to soften up. They were pretty much impossible to go through without soaking them first, but we only let them soak a little bit. And as we pulled it apart, we could see that some of the owl pellet on the inside was still dry. So if you do bake yours at home to prepare them, if you've found them in the wild, I would suggest giving them longer to soak and just allowing yourself that amount of time. It's going to make the whole process a lot easier. These ones did not smell as much either. At this point, we want to identify some of those bones and try to figure out what kind of animal our owls have eaten. Once we put them down on this little chart, we kind of had an idea. It was kind of fun identifying all of these bones. And so we were able to figure out what kind of animal our our owl had eaten and then when we opened up the field guide, we got to see all the other bones kind of laid out spread out like a skeleton and this gave us an idea. All right, so I'm pulling into some of my own personal items here and I found these shadow frames at Party City after Easter and they were extremely marked down. They're only 50 cents each, so I bought them all and I knew that I'd have some kind of idea on what we could do with them in our homeschool and sure enough, very quickly we decided to use them to display some of our projects. I've cut down my watercolor paper to about 8 inches by 8 inches and we are going to be gluing this onto the backing of that shadow box but first we want to glue down our skeleton onto our watercolor paper. Okay, so I'm just making sure that it's all going to look really good. Because it's a shadow box, I want to make sure that our skeleton is evenly placed. I'm also trying out different label holders to see how we're going to label this. And we're going to do all of that at the end once everything's glued down. I've got some Tombow Mono Adhesive Glue and I decided to use this rather than my hot glue gun because this is going to give us a little bit more working time to position our skeleton where we want it and so it's going to stay wet longer and also it's going to dry completely clear and so you're not going to see it once it's done. So I highly advise you using a glue that's going to completely disappear once it's done but you want to make sure that it's nice and strong after all this work. You don't want this to fall apart. I'm also using a glue stick in order to glue the paper to the backing of our frame. This is not an acid-free glue to the best of my knowledge, and I highly recommend that you use acid-free glue. My paper is white, so hopefully it's not going to cause any damage, but do bear that in mind, especially after all this work. You want to make sure that these things are going to be preserved. I decided to go with a different label holder and I used my hot glue gun, which actually didn't last long. I had to re-glue it with another glue. I'm also going to add a little label to that, but first we're going to label our entire skeleton. Now I went ahead and I glued down the skeleton for my son, but he is going to go ahead and label this with the best possible handwriting he has. And that took a really long time, but I'm really pleased with the way it looked like when it was done. Next, I'm going to add that little label to the front of the frame, and then we want to glue our frame back onto the backing and I'm using some Gorilla Glue. This is wood glue. Again, I decided to not use my hot glue gun for this because I thought it would cool down once I got it all in place and not glue fast enough. The Gorilla Glue is awesome. I did leave it to dry thoroughly before I hung it up. Uh, it took about 40 minutes just to make sure that it was really all adhered before I took it to our schoolroom and hung it next to our chalkboard that is displaying our current unit. 
I am really pleased with the way this project turned out, especially since we had enough bones to make a complete skeleton. Looks great in our homeschool room and was a great addition for this owl unit. We went ahead and we saved the rest of the pieces that came in that owl pellet for future projects. Okay, so if you want to see some of the other projects in our OWL unit, you can tap on the screen right now. You can find more information about this project and the details for this unit on my website at pepperandpine.com. And don't forget that if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at pepperandpine.